with another video <laughs> blog behind the lens, and I have a special guest today. And this is really the first time I've taken and had a sit down sort of interview. But we have Carrick James with us here. And Carrick is a great friend of mine. In fact, uh, I call him one of my best friends. And we uh, met back at ASU, uh, I think it was 1980. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, and um, back then, I was a landscape photographer, and you were too. Uh, I think we wanted to take on the world, and I wanted to be Ansel Adams. I mean, I don't know about you, but, but it was good times. And I think one of the things that drew me to you from day one uh, was your passion and your dedication to the craft. And I think that if we look back in those days, there were a lot of students that weren't very serious. Quite a few at ASU. Yeah. It was a and different so, atmosphere. Yeah. So, uh, Carrick and I hooked it up. In fact, um, and, and I don't know if you know this, but the, the very first time I met Carrick, uh, we were in the back of the room and there was a critique going on and of course there was a lot of BS you know, going on along with that. And we kind of looked at each other and rolled our eyes. But um, and Carrick said, hey, I'm taking off uh, this weekend to go to Monument Valley. Would you like to join me? And I said, oh, absolutely. But I had to cancel a dinner date with a girl that I was dating, and that pissed her off, and she dumped me. And so if you think about it, uh, we still have a friendship. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's longer than that. Yeah, that's date, right. That's sure. And uh, so I gave up a girlfriend for you. But at uh, any rate, um, we went to Monument Valley, had a great time, and we've been buds ever since. So mm -hmm. we've taken a lot of trips together. But here's what I want to do. Number one is I want you to see, we're going to show some of, the, of, of Carrick's stuff here. And uh, first of all, let's find out where can we find you? What, what you have, CarrickJames.com is your, uh, is your uh, what main website. Right, that's my portfolio site. And then I have two other websites. One is for uh, photo workshops. It's uh, KJPhotosafaris.com. And then I have an editorial search site with about 4,000 images, which are keyword searchable. And that's what editors use to, to find my work. And that's uh, AGPIX.com slash Carrick James. Okay. You, you can Google it. I'm there. Well, all right. We'll post that. We'll put a little little slide at the very end that says, you know, where all this stuff's going to, you know, we can find you. Now, um, let's talk about, what I, number one, I, I want to, how would you define what you do today? What, if, you, if I say, you know, hey, you're, we're on an airplane and, and you say, I'm, I'm a photographer, I go, oh, you do weddings? <laughs> hear that a lot. Well, over the years, I, I call myself a travel photographer, but really now I'm more of a travel journalist because in addition to, to photographing, I've been doing more writing uh, on travel subjects for publications in recent years and also a lot of teaching, teaching photo workshops for the last 12 years. And that's, that's, right. that's been a transition thing since the industry has changed a great deal. Yeah. Well, plus, you know, like me, mm -hmm. I'm at, not at the end of my career, but I'm at a point in my career mm -hmm. where I've done a lot and I have a lot of knowledge, uh, and I've sort of uh, the school of hard knocks, and, and especially like in things of marketing, um, right. you know, uh, overcoming uh, the fear of rejection, knocking on doors, all that mm -hmm. stuff. So, so that makes what I have to say, I think, has some more 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 uh, validity because I've been there, mm -hmm. I've done it, and so so have you. So we're we're oh, almost yeah. we're like a month apart in terms of age. Yeah. But um, so l let's do this. Um, if we go back to our college days. Um, you know, if you think about it, I was landscape, serious, you know, in large format. Well, and I, I don't know what, that, what at that time period, I think I had a 4 by 5 when we met. Mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of medium format, 6 by 7 the Mamiya RB. Um, but uh, we had influences back then that were like, of course, Ansel Adams, but uh, right. Edward Weston. We had um, David Munch, David for Munch, on the yeah. color side. Well, yeah. On the color side, he mm -hmm. was one of those pioneers that really influenced me. Mm -hmm. uh, the wide angle lens, kind of near far perspective. He right. was a big, big. Uh, you could step right into it, fall into the frame. Yes, basically. Um, we had, but I remember, like for example, if you looked at art history, we studied a lot in art, art history to get our degree. But um, like Edward West in the day books, mm -hmm. you know, I remember you were reading those, and I was like, wow, this is kind of interesting, you know. But we absorbed ourselves with everything, everything that had to do with photography. Right. And we didn't have the internet, we didn't have the um, resources we have today. But I remember going to the library and just sitting there and just picking a book up, flip mm -hmm. through it, put it back, pick another book up. And I would spend three, four hours just sitting at the library looking at photography. Just soaking it. Just, you have to immerse yourself in it no matter how you get the information. For us, it was the books then. Now, online, it's, it's all there. Well, remember, I used to go to friend's house and look at um, album covers. Yeah, that was yeah. a source of artwork sure, and photography artwork, yeah. that I could look at and absorb mm -hmm. myself. And, and you know, right. um, but the thing is, um, 
what I had at that point in my life was this passion to absorb everything I could about photography. I know you had that. We used to, we roomed together uh, later. Um, and, but what we didn't have, we didn't know where to start in terms of making a living. Right. And Marketing. we've been on a, a long journey from that point. Yes. It took quite a while. And we went different paths. You went the commercial uh, photography route. And I, I went editorial by choice because I love to travel and I just sacrificed everything to getting out there and bringing back images of, of the places that I, and sharing stories through pictures and words. Well, and part of the payback uh, for being an editorial mm -hmm. photographer is you get to go out, number one, and do your own thing more. Much more. It's not as scripted as what I do or right. have done in those years. Yeah. Um, and you get paid by being, say, floating down the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. which is an incredible, we just talked about that at lunch, right. is opportunities that most of us wouldn't get because, you know, we're, well, for me, I was, you know, photographing a lot of ad stuff. But um, that's part of the payback. So you've been doing that. You've been, I, I would say, uh, you probably travel more than me, and I'm a, I travel a lot. You do. So yeah. travel is great. Um, uh, the experiences of having that behind you. Um, so let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If you were to say, um, and I ask myself this question all the time, where, where, where do I want to be five years from now? So mm -hmm. I, I, I know I don't look a day over 70, but um, no, I'm 57, so we're 57. Right. Um, so in five years from now, where do you want to be? What, what, how, what does it look like for you in the future in terms, I know that the industry is still changing, we've gone through a huge change, mm -hmm. but what would you like to be doing five years from now? Well, it has been a sea change in the industry. So there, there are fewer editorial markets. I still enjoy contributing to magazines and writing stories. I still want to continue to do that, but selectively. And then really, for me, it's, um, it's all about showing people great places and working with, with talent so, and sharing a lot of the, uh, the insights that I've learned as a travel journalist over the years. I, I started out doing landscape, and then after a while I said, you know what, I'm a little hemmed in by this, by just the grand landscape. So showing people enjoying and exploring the natural world, either uh, in an adventurous way or maybe just an easier way, is what I specialized in. So kayaking and river rafting and some climbing, uh, just out there, just really meeting great people. And, and I still I, I want to do that as long as I can. And in five years, I, I think I'll still be able to go up Mount Whitney like I did recently, yeah. uh, hike out of the Grand Canyon a couple times this year. You're in better shape things. than me. Well, use it or lose it. Yeah, um, well, and it, that's right. You got to oil. You got to oil the, uh, the 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 machine, right? Keep mm -hmm. it going. Keep it fluid. Um, so you do have a lot of people in your landscapes, but they're backed up. Mm -hmm. Now I turn. Now this is an interesting story. So Carrick and I are sitting uh, at uh, the Chuck Box on University, right right in the midst of ASU. And I had taken this class uh, that was my last. Uh, you know, it's like a four hundred level senior mm -hmm. uh, photography class. I was running out of options, you know, and I took this portrait class. It had nothing to do with strobes or anything, but it was called a portrait, you know, photography. And, um, and so I followed this little kid around. I took some portraits, natural light kind of thing, and then I was sharing those with Carrick, and Carrick said, I think you got something here. I and I was like, clearly. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, you just don't want me doing landscapes because I'm your competition, right. right, as a joke. Which, which is another side note, you and I have never felt this like competition thing of we've always encouraged each other in what we love to do. But that actually planted a seed in me. Mm -hmm. Now, it took me a couple of years before I actually started photographing people, but that's pretty much all I do now. Well, I do these backgrounds right. now for, for my composites, but, right. um, but I'm not a landscape photographer. Uh, but So I've turned my attention toward people. You've done it too, but it's in more of a backed up uh, so like here's this guy on a kayak, uh, yeah. gorgeous light. You have all, well, this is this category called explorer, but I mean all these pretty much have people in them, mm -hmm. and uh, but yeah. they're small in figure, which which is kind of cool because it puts the scale to the overall scene. Right, and people when they see other people in the uh, in the image, the grand landscape wherever it is, the top of the grand or the top of uh, the Great Wall of China where it just was last month, they can imagine themselves being that person, and if it's um, Kind of a heroic uh, adventure experience that so much the better as far as I'm concerned. Well, that goes back to a photograph has to have an emotional impact to your viewer. If it doesn't, it falls flat. Now, you can't impact every single person, but uh, the goal is to that when you show a photograph, whether it's a, you know, it's a, in my industry, it's a great, let's say it's an athlete that looks really, mm -hmm. you know, amazing right. six pack, 
which by the way, I have one. Did I tell you? I think it's in the fridge. Yeah. Um, my six pack's hidden. It's insulated right now. But but you say, I want to be that person, or I love yeah, that yeah. athlete, I, you know, it's my right. favorite athlete. So there's an emotional attachment. Right. So what you're doing is you're saying to your viewer, look, you could be there. That could be your adventure. Mm -hmm. That could be your vacation. Um, that could be your honeymoon or whatever it is. You're, you're drawing in your viewer based on the emotional impact too. Right. It's like their dream. And uh, honestly, this has been the core of my career is, is engaging people in that way. Uh, and it's worked uh, for stories, uh, for ads, et cetera. And, and plus, it gets me out there doing the things I love to do yeah. and meeting fabulous guides and people that explore the planet. Now, one of the things that's funny about Carrick and I, we've done all these trips together, and we used to do, well, for a while we were doing a trip a year. Remember, we used to oh, yeah. fly, fly, I'd fly out and we'd meet up. And then, of course, you know, kids and everything kind of yeah. came along, and, and, it, and it takes a lot of your time. But, but um, I remember uh, we went to Baja, and the funny mm -hmm. thing about this, we went, it was two weeks, and this was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Carrick had a map, and he had this map. He'd throw out this map, and he'd say, first night we're camping here. Uh, lunch we're spending here, we're camping here, we're doing this, 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 this. He had this whole trip planned out. And now, and that's you, that's your, yes, your personality, you're very organized. And then there's me. I know me. where I want to go. You yeah. Know, yeah. Then there's me. Uh, which way is the wind blowing? That's, that's how I do it. And uh, we had a lot of fun because I was yeah. pulling him in one direction, like, let's just go down here and photograph. And then he's like, nope, we got to be here, right? So we had this really, it was a fun trip, and I still have great memories of that. And hopefully we'll get a chance to do some more trips down the road. Okay. And now that my kids are, they're all gone. You know, yours are almost there, not almost quite. There. But um, So that's another thing about personalities, though, which mm -hmm. is fun because, and I keep saying this to people, look, take and go in the direction that you love, that fits you like a glove. Don't try to be someone else. And so that, that we can see the difference in our careers over the years and how we've gone different directions, but um, we still have a passion for the craft. Absolutely. I and, get up every day thinking about it. Yeah. Well, and me too. And, and, and that goes back to you can't go it halfway. To survive in this, in the industry, you cannot mm -hmm. do it halfway. Um, let's see. we got some pictures here. Uh, again, go to CarrickJames.com. Look through um, his images. In fact, I might try to get a few of your images uh, that we can just uh, scroll through. Which one? Adventure? Let's do adventure. Okay. Yeah. And uh, this is a crack up image right here. Uh, tell me a little about this guy. Is, there's a, is that like an uh, anchor? That's, that's an anchor from a historic shipwreck off the coast of Australia. And 1849, a, a ship filled with uh, people coming from England uh, drowned within sight of land after a journey of months, six months or so, whatever. It's called the Fiji. And the guy swinging up on the anchor is my national guide. I was shooting a story for a National Geo Adventure. And the idea is that um, if when you're doing this 56-mile hike, part of it's on the beach. And if you don't know how to read tide tables, you can end up uh, Which I don't. drowned. Well, yeah. I don't either. But fortunately, he could. He could. And this, I was trying to show that the, uh, the risk there if you don't pay attention to things. And uh, I'm on a slightly higher rock. I tilted the, uh, the camera so I'd have a, a sense of a... a off balance uh, right, right. sense of time. And then he was incredibly strong. He would, he would pull himself up like a human wire on the anchor as the wave came in. And then he did it five or six times. It looks like the waves and the wind are blowing him in that direction, which is, is, that's my first thought was, wow. A little bit. And then uh, as a uh, technical thing, I, I wanted the motion. So what I did, this is a film shot. So I uh, stopped down, way down to probably F-22, and uh, then had a, a long enough shutter speed to get a flowing action in the water. That's great. You do a lot of river rafting stuff. Oh, here kayaking too. That's kind of kayaking is your uh -huh. thing, right? I love water sports. Love shooting from from the water level. Yeah. And water does make great backgrounds. Or you know, I say the water. I'd love you know doing long exposures. Um, but a lot of kayak stuff here. We obviously we're up in north, um, and we got a, a glacier or I mean iceberg sitting there. And what's that up there? That's just a hole. Yeah. Okay. Thought that was a bear sneaking in. No, it'd be white anyways, wouldn't it? I've shot polar bears in black and brown too. Here's one. This is one of your your. Oh, yeah. It's been on posters and everything, mm -hmm. and that's uh, going down the the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it's in the Upper Granite Gorge, entering Sock Dollinger Rapid, which is the old 1850s or 60s term for the knockout punch. Well, now this is another thing about Carrick. See, now when we go on trips, this is this is this cracks cracks me up. 
Carrick is a wealth of knowledge and he's smart. I'm just kind of like the average Joe, right? He knows all this stuff. And we'd be driving along and he'd look over and he'd say, that rock is some kind of formation, you know, like your geology background. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, all I know is it doesn't make a good photograph yeah. or whatever. He'd talk about the cloud, you know, formations and whatever. And to me, I have one thing. Does it make a good photograph? I don't care the name if of not, it. let's go. But you have all the names and all these, uh, yeah. you know, information that you're, uh, you know, a wealth of source, which is great. And again, that goes back to personalities. Um, a lot of know, reading. A lot of reading and mm -hmm. in your ability to write and uh, communicate with, with people, which is great. So, well, I mean, I, like I said, I would encourage people to go and take a look at your, your, your information, or uh, mm -hmm. if they can find out um, uh, on that one site about any workshops you've got coming up. Right. You do right. work with Arizona Highways a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, it would be great. What's your, what was your last workshop? Last workshop was Havasu Pie in the fall. This year I was also the South Island in New Zealand. Uh, have a soup pie in the summer, uh, rafting in the Grand Canyon, okay. uh, also uh, New Mexico. I, I do custom workshops of individuals as well. That's great. Not just groups. And that's good because, in, and in fact, that's kind of a great way to do it. I just had a, an email from two guys mm -hmm. that, I won't tell you where, just, but because it was another country, and they said, can we have two days with you personally, you just the two of us? Right. And it's hard to price that sometimes, but, um, but at any rate, so... If someone's got the money and they want that attention one on one kind of uh, that's a great a great way it's to It's much better for them because they don't have to share your, your time and uh, they get exactly what they want. They go to where they want to, which is important. That's great. So. Well, Carrick, we know we, we could talk all day long oh, yeah. and uh, it would be fun to uh, continue this. But again, this being my first interview, uh, I think it, this is fun. I mean, yeah, you, so you're, you're kind of kicking off the interview thing. So yeah, well, I'm happy to be the, the first and uh, and I, uh, I still remember that day in, in, in photo class at ASU when you were showing the landscapes and then you, you showed me this portrait of that little girl and she was by, it was Lindsay, by the uh, piano. I remember it was Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. No, no, that was, um, that was the Schultz daughter, Amy oh, Schultz. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, Amy Schultz. But she, what a beautiful yeah. light and right yeah. then and there, that had so much power and potency right there. I, I just, even though I didn't do people at, at all that time, I reacted to it strongly. Well, that makes me feel really old because now she's a grandma. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, uh, well, That's I hope you college. enjoyed this. Carrick, thank you very much. You bet. You bet. And um, like I said, we're going to put on the uh, title slide at the very end here all the information. Go to my uh, website too, joelgrimes.com, and my blog, joelgrimesworkshops.com, and my Facebook, uh, all that stuff will be on there. I hope you enjoyed this interview. <laughs> <laughs>